One of the top questions we get here at CD Baby is, how should I promote my music? What are opportunities for me to build an audience and find new fans? Well, in today's episode, we're going to give you 50 ideas on how to do just that. You're listening to the CD Baby. CD Baby. CD Baby. CD Baby. DIY. DIY. Oh. Musician. Musician. Podcast. Podcast. Hey there, and welcome to episode number 315 of the CD Baby DIY Musician Podcast. My name is Kevin Bruner, and joining me is Chris Robley. And today we're going to be talking about 50 promo ideas in 50 minutes. We're going to have Chris, to keep it you succinct. Doing? I'm good. I played a gig the other day, and I've got three more in the next two weeks. So I'm feeling like live music is a thing in my life again. Yeah, I'm thinking about going to a show tonight. Wow. <laughs> It's just any about, random show or a particular one. Henry, who was in Hello Morning with me, his older band, Jonah, is playing. By older, I mean that predates Hello Morning. Uh, Not they're that they're all tonight. 97 years old. No, no. I love uh, Jonah. So, That's cool. They're doing a gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're playing. I, I make... <laughs> it's, it's always that thing. I'm sure lots of people can relate. You're like, do I really want to drive into town late? Then, you know, if I'm by myself, it's like I can have one beer and then I've got to drive home. Will your car still be in the, in the parking lot when you return? Exactly. It's like it's Portland. There's a chance you might not have a car after 50-50 <laughs> probably 75% chance you'll be missing a window. Um, yeah, so or your car's still there, but the window's gone and there's some new interesting things in your car that you don't want to be there. And maybe people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll see. But yes, shows are happening again. That's exciting. I know a lot of artists have started going out on tour. In fact, you and I were talking about all the resources that we've created over the years around having a great live show, both with like, you know, the, the Tom Jackson uh, live band makeover at the conference we just had. He's done a singer songwriter live makeover. We've done all sorts of things like booking and that we need to put them all together and yeah, make some yeah, we definitive should. resource for everybody because there's a lot of good stuff out there and a lot of people thinking about tuning up that live show and getting rolling again. Yeah. All right. Well, let's package yeah. it up. Yes. Let's do that. Well, we have 50 promo ideas for you in 50 minutes. And if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably rolling your eyes thinking, how are they going to do 50 things in 50 minutes? They can barely do 10 in 50 minutes. There is a video version of this where there will be a timer on screen allowing us only 60 seconds per an item. So we will make it right on time, <laughs> right on time. Before we do that, though, I want you to give you a reminder that right now, all distribution, whether you have one song or 50, is just $4.99. So that single or an album that could have... What's the limit of tracks you can have on I think album, it might Chris? be something like 50 or 49, something like that. At least it yeah. used to be. No matter how many tracks, whether it's a single or an album, $4.99 includes the barcode. Such a screaming deal. And Chris, you're working on a little bit of a bombshell content piece that uh, <laughs> I think is going to surprise a lot of people. I'm, I'm not going to say what it is. Yeah, I don't but... even know how I can tease that without just giving it away. But um, let's just say... If you're using anyone else besides CD Baby, you uh, you need to make better life choices. <laughs> you really need to do some math. Do some very simple but perhaps hidden math. Not that the math yes. is hidden. The figures you will need to incorporate in your equation. Yes. Yes. So that'll be coming out. And it'll be not only highlighting why CD Baby is your obvious choice, but $4.99 for what you get for CD Baby is a screaming deal. No annual fees. Your music stays up forever. Head on over to cdbaby.com and check it out. It's complete pricing transparency. And we're excited about that. All right. So we've got our 50 promo ideas in 50 minutes. We've got a call and an email, and then we've got a couple scam emails coming up. So as a reminder, if there's something that you want to contribute to the show, maybe we forget a promo idea that you think is a good one, you can do so. You call our listener line at 360 524-2209, or you can email us at podcast at cdbabypodcast.com, and maybe you'll be on the show. So, Chris, there any, uh, there's no like theme music to, to get us into this 50 <laughs> no, in 50. 
do, 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 do. There's the theme music. We do uh, have no. slides though. So if, if, if you normally listen to the podcast feed, this might be a good one to, to jump over and watch the podcast on YouTube because all the slides will be there. Yeah. And I'll do for the ones where the slides need to be described, I'll do my best to just describe them to listeners. But the other thing I was going to say is some of these slides, they're a little abstract. So since I put them all together, I don't know if Kevin will need a little prompt. You know, there's a picture of <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're tag team. Cup. He might be like, what the hell is this again? So I'll, I'll prompt him and then <laughs> okay, he can okay. carry the rest of the minute. We did we did go through this ahead of time, but <laughs> the, uh, we're tag teaming and some of the slides, Chris made all the slides and some of them I'm like, I don't remember what this is supposed to be. <laughs> Hopefully I will. But all yeah, right. no, th this grew out of the sort of the reality that musicians, we have like grand plans for our marketing and promotion, but we don't always have the time to fully execute a massive advertising funnel or like, you know, a huge video project or something. So generally we find ourselves with five minutes a day or, you know, whatever, an hour a week or something where really just tackling a small item is, is the only thing that's really going to get done, but it's important to do a lot of small things. So you still feel momentum and that you're building something and things are happening. So this is kind of a list of those smaller things. Yeah. And the thing I like about it is oftentimes we overcomplicate the idea of promotion in our heads. Like you're saying, building this whole funnel and it's going to take me time and work. And what if I do it wrong? Or it's a lot of money. And oftentimes there's just a lot of little simple ideas sitting right there in front of you. So hopefully you'll get some things from this list that you can use. There's a lot of great ideas here, but beyond that, hopefully it inspires just some simplistic creative thinking about what you could do right now or little things that are easier to attain that are more short-term oriented. And if you come up with some that aren't on this list, please call our listener line and share or email us and we will put those on the podcast. So we ready to dive in? Okay, and then we have a nice little timer here to remind us that we got to stick to this schedule. And then I'll just say, if you are hungry for more promo ideas, there are hundreds more on the DIY Musician blog. So check that out. All right. So the first grouping of tips are really all about your web presence. And the first thing that is on this list is not so much anything you need to create or say to your audience. It's really about hanging out where people are, hanging out on your preferred platform and just soaking up the culture there. So the picture is, is a picture of the pub in Oxford where Bill Clinton apparently did not inhale. But <laughs> I thought about him traveling to England as a young person and, you know, probably not knowing the culture and the language and what night they have pub quiz on. So he probably just went and hung out at this place and he met some people slowly. So my recommendation is set a timer, like literally get out your phone and set a five minute timer and go on your preferred platform. Let's say it's TikTok. Spend five minutes there every day, learn the culture, find out the new memes, the new trends. And then when that five minute buzzer rings, get the hell off, stop scrolling and just write down anything that you are inspired to do that you can then do later, but don't get lost in social. The next tip I have is kind of a solution to the situation I think we all find ourselves in where we're on multiple platforms. We're trying to manage three, four, five social platforms, email, a website, this, that, and the other thing. That is super stressful. And sometimes we say just be on one platform, but I think the realistic answer is you can be on lots of platforms, but you're probably only going to do one super well. So accept that fact, plant your flag on that one priority platform. Let's say it's TikTok or you know Instagram, whatever. But then here's the thing you need to do. Take four or five minutes and go on all your other profiles and such and make sure you're pointing to the priority platform. So let's say you're going live every day on Twitch. Well, make sure your Twitter bio, and your Instagram bio say, hey, I'm playing death metal covers of Frank Sinatra songs every day at one o'clock on Twitch. Join me there, put the link and get everyone from all these places to the place where you're spending the most time. Please tell me you're really doing that. <laughs> Not yet. There's a you timer know, running. I can't distract you. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Well, so the other reality is when you're hanging out at this new pub and you're learning the culture, when you hang out there long enough, you realize the bartender starts charging more for drinks and they change the night that pub quiz is at. And certain people have graduated from college and they're not hanging out there anymore. This is the reality of every social platform. 
They start off great and then they start to suck more and more and more. They want to extract as much money from us as possible, throttle our reach. So at that point, if you still have friends at this pub or this platform, it's time to invite them back to your place so you can throw a party on your own web property, your website. And the picture I have is this giant mansion. And I put that there because I think artists sometimes say, well, I don't have a lot of rooms in my house. I don't have a lot going on in my career. You know, like, what, why do I need a website? Well, this website, which is just a single room cabin, a tiny house, can be just as interesting. I think the person that lives there probably has just as interesting a life as the person in the mansion. So don't be afraid to have a single page website. I'm going over time here, but as long as it's got, you know, a video, a song, your contact information, the basics, and a reason for someone to leave the pub to go over and have the party at your own house. This one I can get through quick. This is just about making sure you use all the promo tools that are on your website. So if you have a web hosting service that gives you things like announcement bars, pop-ups, anything like that, make sure you spend five minutes to just direct the attention the way you need it to be directed on your website. And don't be afraid to use your homepage as kind of the most important news announcement. And if what? you haven't looked at your website recently, make sure you check in on it every once in a while because people might think, oh, I've got those in place, but it's from three albums ago, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good audit every once in a while. <laughs> this next one, I think I can be kind of quick about this one. It's just install a remarketing pixel or remarketing code on your website. It's important to do this even if you're not advertising currently because what a pixel does, whether it's TikTok, Google, Facebook, it basically tracks user behavior on your website and it's building audiences kind of behind the scenes so that later when you do want to run ads, you can reach people knowing, you know, knowing that they've been on your site, knowing what they've done on your site, which types of content they're interested in. All that is very important if you want to do, you know, better targeting for your ads. So this <laughs> code that you're seeing on screen probably looks intimidating. There's tons of YouTube videos about how to it's install easy. a Facebook pixel. So do some it's research. Easy. All right, Kevin, you're up. All right, I'm up. So a lot of times we overcomplicate the content process by thinking, oh, I don't have anything. What can I use for video? Or I just don't have enough content to make anything compelling. You can find stuff. Uh, so like on screen right now is some found footage. Our coworker, Christina, had a song called Fountain of Youth. And this, vi this found footage is all old people on vacation in the 80s, it looks like. <laughs> or maybe 70s, probably 80s. Perfect for the, Fountain of Youth. Yes. Or you can use other footage of TV shows and things like that that you find online that you can use as content. It doesn't have to be original content you make. Or there's another thing on screen. Christina is really into to baths. And so she made a bunch of content of other people in baths, like from TV shows. And lastly, there's lots of websites where you can get public domain footage that you can use. So get creative. All right, performance videos. That's another easy opportunity, easy promotion opportunity, whether it's just, just a simple live video, up close, personal. Those I've seen a lot of those on TikTok. They seem to be performing really well. It does not have to be the entire song. It could be a chorus. It could just be a hook. So yeah, mess around with that. It doesn't have to get overcomplicated. I wish the audio was working on this video because it's such a beautiful song that this person, Alice Howe, is performing. But yeah, I think this works really good for kind of introductory ad content too. Yeah. What's important is check out online what other people like this are doing because some of it's just how they frame the shot. They get up closer. It feels more personal and compelling. So if your camera is all the way across the room, it might just look like a boring video of someone sitting there playing. All right, duets and collaborations, those are popular on TikTok. So you can just jump on a trend or jump in on a conversation, basically. It can be a musical conversation. It could be just weighing in on something, but it's an opportunity to reach broader audiences. And we've been seeing a lot of artists do this as well. There's one on screen, the audio we couldn't get working. Chris says it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's Rachel from CD Baby here doing a, a, a duet with, what character is that, Chris? Brian Jordan Alvarez. He's an actor, comedian, and he just does this wacky, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. So if you go on TikTok, you'll see it. But yeah, what I love about this is Rachel's really good about jumping in on other kind of trending meme type stuff on TikTok. And 
takes the pressure off artists being like, what do I have to create on my own today? It's just like, oh, I'll just jump in on this other conversation yeah. that's already going on. Yeah, easy. And sometimes it helps spark an idea. And then we've got one more that's video related. Make a canvas and upload it to Spotify. We have a partnership with Rotor Videos. They have a tool that makes it super easy for you to make a canvas video. If you're not familiar with what those are, those are the, the three to eight second looping videos in Spotify that just keep looping while a song's playing. And you can add one to any of your songs at any time through Spotify for Artists. And according to Spotify, they boost engagement, all the engagement metrics that matter like saves and watches or, or streams uh, and people adding it to their, their music catalog. So it's worth doing this. It's affordable and you can change them at any time. They don't have, it's not a set, set it and forget it. You can keep changing it if, as appropriate. Yeah. And I like that because you could like sort of have a story unfold over a long time and have reasons to, for your audience to keep going back to the same song on Spotify. Yeah. The next thing we're going to talk about is sort of your artist identity. This is probably more of an hour or two hour type thing, but defining your USP, which is just your unique sales proposition. What makes you different from your competition? What makes you unique? And then also how does your uniqueness meet a customer need? So with artists, it's sort of tough to kind of wrap our heads around this. Sometimes we're just like, well, I make good music and people want good music. But what I really mean is, okay, analyze who are your competitors. Okay. They are folk musicians. Okay. What do you do? Well, I do Scandinavian Viking songs. What do your customers want? Well, they want like pump up music that is folky, but also energetic enough to work out to. I don't know. Just something like that. So Figuring out the way in which you're different from your competitors, but you meet an audience need. And Kevin's laughing at something. <laughs> I like, did you say folk music you can work out to? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Viking songs. It's when you only want to lift the lighter dumbbells. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really quickly. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Basically, that is figure out who you are, why you're different, why people need you. Once you have, you should tell your story. And I do not mean your entire life story. Please don't do that. You know, we joke a lot about these bios that start with, oh, I was born in Rhode Island and I did this. No, go back to that USP we mentioned and then write it out in a bunch of different ways. You know, feel free to write 20 pages, write two pages, whatever, and then have your friends read it, pick out the most interesting parts. And then you're going to want to spin that into an elevator pitch, which we discussed in this podcast, maybe three or four episodes ago, you'll need a short bio, something that can go on, you know, Twitter and Instagram, longer bio for your website. You'll also want to spin that into a press release. Sometimes you'll have to incorporate aspects of your story into a cover letter or an email pitch that might be filmed for a channel trailer. And, you know, your story will sort of inform a lot of stuff. So tell your story. This slide is really about testing your assumptions about your unique sales proposition. Uh, against an actual audience to see, well, do does my audience need this music? And the quote I have here is, you can please some of the people all of the time. You can please all of the people some of the time, but you can't please all of the people all the time. So just starting from the basic premise that not everyone is going to love your music. So find the people that do. And one of the best ways to do that is through ads, because you can target essentially total strangers with some parameters that hopefully these ads are reaching the right people. And if they're working well, well, great, your assumptions are correct. And if they're not working well, your assumptions about who your audience is, is probably wrong. So, you know, do some very simple ad stuff just to see if people are resonating with your music, or I should say, to see if the people you think will resonate with your music actually are. Okay, so I said, tell your story, but not all of it. But I think there is a place for long form storytelling in an artist's life. We're creative people. We write lyrics. A lot of times that makes us decent writers. And if you want to keep a tour diary, detailed notes about your time in the studio, why you wrote songs, I think go long and write essays, whether they end up on your website as sort of like a blog diary. Or one thing I did is I kept a tour diary and I submitted it as a, a ongoing column to our local arts weekly in Portland, Oregon called the Lamet Week. It was just, you know, chance to just sprawl out. And I don't assume everyone who read the Willamette Week was reading these super long essays I was writing, but I think enough people who are inclined to do so got a deeper look into my life. So yeah, where appropriate, write some long form content. 
All right, Kevin, you're up. <clears throat> All right. There's some simple ideas. Just get get creative and with your phone, get get some more visual content rolling. I was kicking myself, Chris, because we were just in Austin for the conference where there's a lot of vibey and moody places and walls. I'm like, why didn't I just get a couple interesting photos while I was there? And oh, I don't know, maybe because we were hosting a giant event. That's probably so. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I've got some travel coming up and I'm thinking, oh, I, that's that's something I like to do, like is find interesting places and take a good picture. And that makes easy, quick content. And also, oftentimes, we try to overcomplicate band photos and artist photos anyway. So just with the phones we have today and the 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 cameras we have, uh, just take some cool photos and keep them rolling. They they can inspire a lot of creativity once you get in the mood. All right, here's another one. Make sure you've claimed all the profiles that you need to claim, even if you don't plan to use some of the major platforms. Like for example. Chris, on the screen, there's a giant egg, what Twitter used to have before they had profile pictures. Like before you added a profile picture, you just look like an egg. <laughs> Even if you're not going to use Twitter, it's a major platform. Go ahead and claim your account there. Make sure you've got Amazon for artists, Spotify for artists, Apple Music for artists, the YouTube official artist channel. Go claim all those. A lot of them have built-in promo opportunities that are free and easy to use when you're releasing music. And it's just good to make sure that they're all customized and at least have your contact information, like Chris said earlier, point back to the place where you are going to be hanging out the most online. Yeah. And I think this is crucial to do again, like you said, even if you're not super active there, because if you don't customize your profiles, it just looks like a ghost town and then no one's going to take you seriously. Yeah. And you don't know where people are searching. Like fans are so fractured, booking agents are fractured on platforms and they may be on a platform and go, oh, they're not, they look like they don't even exist. All right. Moving on. Repurpose your art. When you create your artwork, think about how you can use that to create a vibe beyond just the finished artwork and how it can help fill in some of these platforms and use it as opportunities to message and create a vibe around your new release. I love uh, album art. And every time we do something, I make sure that there is lots of support material that gets created around the artwork just because... I like it feeling like it's not just one image, it's a deeper story and experience and just kind of sets the tone for that season of where we're at. And it, it informs a lot of promotion opportunities as well. Yeah, and I think beyond just the visuals of how you're branding yourself online, it also could be merch, posters, t-shirts, all kinds of ways to repurpose your art. Yep. And merch makeover. Every time you have a new release or every, you know, it's probably good every six months to kind of reassess your merch situation. A lot of you are now heading back out to play shows. It's time to, to look at the merch situation. And, you know, there's lots of online selling tools. I love my Banzoogle website. It's got an integration with Printful, which does print on demand. So there's lots of things you can swap in and out and it doesn't cost you anything. So you can try new merch ideas, but Every time you got a new merch item, that's an easy promotion thing to push out there, show your fans, ask them if they're interested in it, or even ask them what they want and go make it for them. Yeah. The only thing I'd add to this is also make kind of do a, an audit of your actual physical merch setup at gigs. Like, yeah. is it easy to plug in? Is it well lit? Does it fold up easy so you can transport it without taking five people an hour? Is the pricing clear? All that kind of stuff. Is the pricing still accurate? So... Is it You're sad laughing. and broken? <laughs> I mean, it's, oh it's yeah, we were on this this tour we just did. It was it was a sad situation at the merch table. <laughs> All right, well, we won't get into that now. The one. timer's going. We, All right, <laughs> pitching to DSP editorial. That's that's another thing. Don't forget, a lot of those platforms like Spotify for artists, Amazon Music for artists, Pandora Amp have free tools in there that allow you to pitch or promote your music in certain ways. Pandora allows you to leave messages for fans like, hey, this is my track. Uh, this is what it's about. Check it out. You know, So all these platforms are adding free tools for artists. And so take advantage of them. Make sure you are using the pitching tools. Yeah, it's just free opportunity for you that you don't want to pass up. Yeah, and I think another thing is even if the editors don't immediately jump on it and do anything with the release because they're you know probably getting thousands of pitches a day, you at least have the chance to provide more metadata, which could help your song end up on a playlist that might be related to a certain genre, certain instrumentation, or theme. So 
definitely do that. Yeah. All right. Third party playlist. We've talked a lot about this. In fact, on our live stream yesterday, we went way into this. There are so many opportunities to reach out to third party playlist. And what we mean by that is it's not a Spotify official playlist. Oftentimes get referred to as user generated playlists, like just people on platform that are using it, making playlists. You can easily find these people. I highly recommend checking out uh, the truth about Spotify playlists, part one and two that we did in the podcast. It's quite a few episodes ago, but it's still relevant. Just you can look these people up. Typically their username on Spotify is being used elsewhere. So oftentimes it's easy to find them that way, or you can use the link to the playlist and typically find them online and reach out to them that way. Tell them that you enjoyed the playlist, that your track would be a good fit and you would promote it if they add your song and we'll move on. We're out of time. So this Go one just automatically switched. Uh, it's oh, wow. it on schedule. <laughs> you want to take this one too, since it's playlist related? Sure. There's a lot of different contexts that you can see your song in. And that's, I think, what playlisting has brought an opportunity that your song might be a specific genre, but it might have a specific theme that it also could go towards. It might have certain instruments that are in it or collaborations or certain keys that are mood or references. There are all sorts of playlists out there. So you can look at your song as having multiple options and connection points. What we're trying to find is that context. It says context on the screen, which are really connection points that can connect your song to different playlist groups or different opportunities. Instead of just thinking about, oh, well, I do country music or rock music or pop music or hip hop. And so I got to just pitch, pitch to hip hop playlist. No, there's lots of opportunities. Yeah. And the other thing is you don't have to wait around to get a placement. You could create a playlist on yes. any of these contextual subjects. Yep. All right. Follow campaign. One of the most important things you can do for your streaming platform presence is to get people to follow you, especially like on Spotify, because it tells the algorithm who likes your kind of music and who's bought in enough that they're following, paying attention to their fans. So we have a great tool at our marketing platform, show.co, which is free. If you have a CD Baby account, there's a link right on your dashboard. You can get it for free. But basically, it has a, a thing in there. You can make a follow campaign. The one on screen is the one I did where it says, hear the song that got us kicked off the stage. And so in order to hear the track, they had to follow us on Spotify or leave their email. So really, the, the tip here is not only with follow campaigns or any campaign, it's really trying to find a hook that's going to have a payoff for your fan or the potential fan. Most people aren't interested in like, hey, I've got a new song. Click this button. It's like, give them something intriguing. Give them a story element, something that's going to make them need to close that loop and find out what, what did they do to get kicked off the stage? Now I got to push this button. Yeah, that might be my all time favorite call to action. <laughs> Good job. And lastly, in this section is say thanks. So many people never say thank you. And I can't tell you how many times in the history of my band, Small Town Poets, where uh, our manager back in the day, after everything, he, he would send us a stack of thank you notes in like, you know, for the week of things we did. And we'd fill them out, write a special note. And we got so many extra gigs and opportunities just because people were blown away that the band actually sent them a note and said, thank you. So many people said, no one's ever done that before. <laughs> Gratitude is revolutionary. There are some great apps out there now that make this where all you got to do is put in the message, the, the person's address, and they'll ship them a nice custom card that you can create in the app and say thanks. So make it happen. <laughs> this one I'll take. It's a very bizarre picture of like a <laughs> coffee is. or a coffee mug or a teacup <laughs> with a spoon that are all made out of fur, which is just some modern art thing. Anyways, this is a ridiculous picture to say, kind of similar to what Kevin was saying, just getting back to the basics of human connection. Take someone out to coffee. It's sort of like saying thanks, but it could be in the context of, hey, I'm curious about your music or how do I get a gig at your venue or whatever it is. You need something, but it doesn't have to always come in the context of, hey, I need something. Give them some benefit too, because I've found like working at CD Baby, whenever I've had a chance to sort of be in a mentorship role, I am the presumed expert, but I always learn something from helping someone else because they might have a uh, yeah, perspective, a question that makes me think about something differently. So 
don't be afraid to take people out to coffee. Yes. Here's a simple one, which you've done a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a simple tip for getting gigs is check out all the calendars for the, the venues in your area or an area where you'd like to be playing and look for opportunities. The thing that was something I did with my band, Hello Morning, here in Portland is I would look at the calendar and it seems like, oh, that band would be, we'd be perfect opener for that band. And it looks like there's no opener listed for this show. Let me ask. And uh, several times that landed us a great opening slot because uh, we were a good fit to open for that band and they didn't have an opener lined up yet. Oftentimes it was just making sure that I was pitching to them uh, knowing that they had a hole in their calendar uh, and that helped them out because they've got a problem to solve. They got to get shows booked. They need to fill a schedule. So that can help you out a lot. So you're not wasting their time around dates that they already have shows and really just kind of get to the point. So check out those calendars. Sometimes they don't keep them up to date. That's the frustrating thing. And don't forget in real life, have some actual concert posters. I have a thing about concert posters. I love them. I love the the whole like the, the real poster. What is it? Flat stock is the thing that tours around with all the handmade posters, screen printed. I love that stuff. That can add some visual interest and just really, you know, I think those are think great things that you can put in the real world. Go to the venue, get get places around the venue that that uh, will hang posters and put those out there. I think it it's not going to bring thousands of people to your show, but it is some reinforcement visually and also creates a vibe for you as an artist and your music. Yeah, I put the the picture that's on screen as one of those depressing telephone poles it's <laughs> littered with like torn posters. So at the very least, print up some nice ones and deliver them to the venue because I think we forget about the in real life aspect of promotion when we live so much online. Yeah, and even asking what the venue is doing because sometimes they might automatically print a poster. Other times they may not, and but they'll take your poster and promote it. So worth doing. This one is pretty simple to do, harder to stick to once you've done it, is to write the word merch on your set list. Keep it as sacred as a song that you put on your set list because, you know, adrenaline kicks in. We're either like feeling bashful or like just so excited that we either forget or decide not to plug our merch. You all know the feeling. Oh, no one's going to buy it anyway. So I'm not, no, write Don't it on the that. set list and, and keep it sacred and have a story to tell that makes a connection and then tie it in with why people need to go and meet you at the merch booth after or go right now and buy the CD or whatever it is. Kind of have that written down in advance and even practice it in your set. And, you know, it can be bullet points. You don't have to memorize a script, but keep merch sacred. Yeah. Local radio. We don't talk about radio much anymore on the podcast, just because I think there's much better ways to spend your money, but local radio can still be an opportunity. And there does seem to be some resurgence in local radio and it may vary depending on where you live, but that's something to always consider. It's not going to be massive, powerful stations, but there could be potentially multiple opportunities for you, whether it's to curate a whole show or to just play on air or get interviewed and, you know, just get creative, check out what's going on in your scene with local radio. And those opportunities are much easier. And if anything, they make great content pieces yep. <laughs> because sometimes the photo of you sitting in a radio station, talking on a microphone or playing on a microphone tells a much bigger story. It uh, gets seen by more people than are listening. See, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, you're, you're live on air. Wow. That's impressive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so uh, these would be specifically three things Lo like local community radio college yes, radio colleges. or potentially maybe even one of those big fm stations if they have like a local hour or something like in my town i think it's every sunday night there's like a local hour or two yes yes oftentimes we don't give our fans proper instruction like we just assume they know everything like they've seen tiktok so they assume that they can throw your music and videos <clears throat> but they may not realize that. So oftentimes just say, this is how you can add our songs to your Instagram reels or TikTok videos, highlighting that fact, make a reel about how to do it. But oftentimes we just don't give fans adequate instruction on how they can help or permission to do things or the ideas. So they go and run with them. So it's an important thing to remember. 
Uh, this one is just about swapping context. So probably over your life as a musician, whether that's been a year or 20 years, you've probably built up some venue contacts, or maybe you have a spreadsheet with playlists or third-party playlists, like we talked about. Any industry contacts you have, you continue to benefit from those relationships, but so can another artist. And so if, let's say, you have a great venue list of West Coast clubs and the talent buyer for each of them, and someone else has the equivalent of the East Coast, and you're going to start doing tours, swap contact lists. Same thing goes for playlists. If there's another artist in your genre that's found their own playlist they've had success with, swap your contacts for that too. And it's just about expanding your network. Yep. This one is just basically the idea that you have to be a three-dimensional personality on social and in life. And it's not all about your music all the time. So it's okay to dive into your other interests. Maybe you're into really weird history trivia or you know how to make a really good quiche or something. Go ahead and shoot a tutorial video or some sort of geeky video that goes into that topic of interest. We talk about topic wheels. If you kind of think of sharing a lot of your passions and not just the music, I think the effect is that people will actually enjoy your music even more. Yes. You're, you're smiling. Well, you said quiche. I was just like, what made what made Chris think about quiche? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like when I come up with examples on the spot, they're always really strange. Like Chris, I didn't. I mean, does Chris love quiche? I mean, that's that's what my mind goes wondering. <laughs> does he make a great quiche? Why have I not had quiche with Chris before? <laughs> I actually do. Maybe that's why I thought of it. Okay, so this next one on the list is about the fact that you should do covers. We recorded a whole episode arguing for the fact that you should do covers, even if you're a genius songwriter. The Beatles did dozens of covers. But again, since this is about quick promo tips, maybe you don't have a bunch of covers in you, you can do a cover song. Or if you don't even have the time to record a whole cover song with multi-track stuff and mixing and all that, just do a cover song performance video just get out your camera and do a song and maybe you don't even know the whole song yet that's okay just do a snippet of the cover in the video so that would be like just the chorus or something and i've actually had fun doing this as i learn songs i'm like oh okay i've got the chorus down i'll shoot a little video and so you can kind of share your progress and the people that are watching they don't know you don't know the rest of the song so do yeah. some cover videos there's lots of opportunity for you to promote yourself just by reusing other content and just by reposting whether you know you're getting some press even bad press i think bad press can be just as good <laughs> that, that's the best yeah. yeah especially if you can make fun of it kind of make fun of yourself in, in doing it but placements fan stories fan photos this is one of the things where i kick myself that i don't check in on twitter more often because usually that's where I see somebody post our song and say something very nice about the song or how it meant something to them or a memory of seeing us or all those kind of things. So oftentimes, you know, just reposting or retweeting or content that already exists out there can provide you f with some good stuff. Here's a tip with that. Just go Google yourself, go look on YouTube, go look on Twitter, have a search running for your handle and any relevant hashtags. Cause like I've got a playlist on YouTube where it's just people doing cover songs of our, of our music. So things like that. That's cool. This one is about adding your lyrics to music's match. If you have not done this, you should. And I haven't done it for my whole catalog cause it does take more time than you kind of hope it would just yes, because you have to basically first get verified with music's match then you have to upload or type in the lyrics make sure they conform to the, the formatting guidelines and then once they're fully processed in their system you can then go pull up the audio for your song in spotify or apple and literally sync the lyrics to the the music and that just takes as long as the song is you know potentially three or four minutes but when you think about doing it for every song that you've ever put out it's it's a bit of a daunting thing so just get started and do do one song and those lyrics get pulled into Spotify, Instagram reels and stories. I think Apple music uses them a whole bunch of places. Yeah. There's a learning curve with using the tool, but once you figure it out, it can go pretty quick. So this is, this is the small town poets Instagram feed, which I have brought up because I think Kevin does a great job of fooling us that he's always on tour because. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm he's really not, good at that trick. This, this is the, the tip. 
make sure you don't put an expiration date on your visual content with a caption that's too time specific. So you can always put a new caption on an old photo. Yes, yes. I do that all the time. In fact, that's one of the things that I, I take an enormous amount of photos and I don't use them all at once. I'll save them in a week after the tour or two weeks later, I'll post more and people think we're still on tour. So yeah, you, you just think about collecting things that are good photos that look like you're telling a story and then save them and use them over time. And don't say this is from when we did this. Just talk about the photo or put an interesting caption, something emotional connection to what's happening in the image. Yeah. And similar, last thing I'll say, similarly to how on TikTok, you can share the exact same video over and over with, you know, slightly different on-screen text or whatever. You can share the same photo again with a totally different caption and make it feel like a totally different story. So yeah. Rehash your old stuff. Yeah. Reels just added the boost button. So this is just about simply running a Reels ad. Instagram Reels are kind of their meta's priority form of content. They're really pushing it. And now you don't even have to go into the ads manager to run an ad. You can just hit that boost. So that's easy to do. Put a few bucks behind your best reel and see how it does. Yep. Yep. And this next one is just so that you can go live. And I put a question mark on this go live just because I think after the pandemic and during the pandemic, there was just such a saturation of live streams that I honestly don't know what the current state of live streaming is and what like audience demand is for these things. So I think there's going to be a, a good time and a place, a good length of uh, duration of how long you're going to play, whether it's just a couple songs or four hours or whatever. It'll probably be different for every audience and what platform you're going live on. But just remember that's in your arsenal and do it enough to figure out when it works best for you in these post-pandemic days. Yeah, I'm, I'd be curious to hear from artists what their experience has been as of late uh, going live. If there's less demand for it, still there. Yeah, it seems like people could have been habituated to it in a good way, but also gotten really sick of it. So, yeah. Okay, so this item, if people who aren't watching, there's a ridiculous video of David Byrne on screen because he interviewed himself. If you've ever watched the like outtakes of Stop Making Sense, there's like some bonus content with him interviewing himself. And it is so bizarre and really, really interesting to me. I'm a huge Talking Heads fan. But what I mean by this is think of the ways in which you're waiting around for an opportunity. Like you're waiting for some gatekeeper to give you their blessing to do something or to, to provide some opportunity. And instead, ask yourself, can I just do this myself? And so if it's waiting to be interviewed, well, interview yourself. If it's waiting to get some glowing review, there's probably a way, a funny way to where you can actually just review your own music and don't try and pass it off like someone else wrote it, but just think of opportunities you're dying for someone else to give you and then just do it yourself. This is, oh, we're going to get into a kind of a segment about email and to some degree SMS, but basically first you should have an email and or SMS list. This again is about owning that direct connection to your fans. So you don't have to pay some tech giant to share your most important messages. And when you have an email list and also with an SMS list, the most important message you will ever send is your welcome message. So imagine your welcome email. Not only are the, is the recipient the most likely to open it because they just subscribed, but that email is the chance for you to describe who you are, make them care more, ask about them. And asking something is super important because you want them to reply to that first message so they teach their Gmail, Outlook, whoever, that you're not spam. And so if they actually reply, well, suddenly you're way more likely to end up in their inbox in the future. So focus on your welcome message, rewrite it if it's been a long time, and then make sure you automate it. So it's not that thing where like you've collected names on tour and then like three months later when you're home, suddenly everyone gets <laughs> the email, a welcome blast. Make sure it's automated. It goes out daily. When you're sending emails that have links to your music, don't bombard people with here it is on Apple, here it is on Amazon, here it is on YouTube, <laughs> here it is on whatever. Use a smart link. At CD Baby, we have something called Here Now. There's also, you know, trillions of smart link options out there. It's just a one page website that links to all the relevant platforms. So you can just send people to that one place, one link, and then they end up where they need to be. Oh, the super signature. So if you don't know what a super signature is, it's basically a PS and you and you want to um, 
what's the word sort of templatize this so it's you know set up in your email template to be there for every message and the idea is that not all your emails should be promotional in nature so every two or out of, say two out of three should provide something else besides a sales offer Mm -hmm. So when you do those like relationship building type emails, you still want to give people the chance to whatever, buy the latest CD, get the limited edition t-shirt. So your super signature can do that work and be like, PS, here's the experience, here's the merch, whatever. And it's a real like low key sales opportunity. And people click on those far more than you'd realize. They probably click on them more than your damn actual sales <laughs> CTA. They I'm going to do this whole email and wait till wait down here. He said, PS. Oh, I'm going to click on that. <laughs> Humans are weird. This next one is about list maintenance. And it's the idea that every six months or so you should do an audit on your email list, figure out who hasn't opened anything in about six months and remove them from your list. You can, you know, keep their email on file, move them to a separate list, something like that. But basically stop sending emails to those people because the more they don't open, the more the Googles and Outlooks of the world are going to start seeing your emails as something that people don't care about. So even if you're terrified, let's say you've got 5,000 people on your list and you're about to get rid of 3,000 of them, it may seem terrifying, but your open rates will uh, yeah, improve and probably the overall value of what you're getting out of sending emails will increase. And, and you'll probably save some money depending on who you're using to send emails. That too. This we could probably both talk about, but it's basically capture the little things like always have the camera ready always have the video rolling not just when you're on stage and some glorious thing is happening but like on screen is a picture little nas x took of an elmo doll who has presumably died in the back seat of a car listening to such amazing music or at least gone to sleep but he has x's in his eyes i just thought this was funny it's like so not glorious it's just a little funny moment from life so don't be afraid to share the little things yeah, I'm always looking for what feels like a story moment that you would see in a magazine or something like that where they're trying to convey visually a story. And so like if someone's just sitting there looking bored, like in the studio or whatever, I love those kind of photos. But I just I just have stuff running all the time because I'm always just looking for those elements that help feel like the realities of what we're doing as it unfolds. Yeah, well, glimpses of your real life. It's important. Like, so you got you share your pictures of playing disc golf, or like I've seen some bands like it's like, hey, here we are at this taco truck that we were told we should check out. Like, I like seeing that stuff, just humanizes yeah. the artist. But this one is about using show.co's ad builder tool, which can get your music advertisement onto big websites. websites. Like Rolling <laughs> Pitchfork, Rollingstone.com, Billboard, you know, massive music sites where you would presume and you'd probably be correct that the people there care about music. That's why they're on these very music specific websites. So if you want to get an interactive ad, which can contain either a Spotify player, a YouTube video player, something like that onto those sites. And sometimes they even look like editorial content when it's actually just a interactive banner ad, check out ad builder by show.co. They're pretty affordable to run. So, you know, I think one thing that's great about the streaming world that is brought is that every release doesn't have to be so precious or there's opportunities for us to on different platforms showcase different aspects of release so on the screen it shows like the demo it shows the acoustic mix live version studio recording remix and so all these are opportunities i think to keep telling the story about a song and do it in creative ways i look at things like not especially with like a single like how do I make this a release, a season of release? Like, here's the song. So like for my band, we did the official version. We did the rock version. We did the dream pop version. Then we did the acoustic version. So it's just how can you keep getting people reengaged with a song, keep pushing the play button, and don't be afraid to share the demo version. Let them hear the progress of the song. It may be something you share after the final one's out because fans need context. They're not part of the creative process. But... There's just lots of ways that you can reinvigorate your fans around a track. Collaborate. That's the next thing on the list with a picture of Elton John with Lil Nas X eating pizza and Chinese food, I think. But the idea behind this is just work with other people. Find, reach out to someone you've always admired their music. Maybe they're at your level or slightly above in terms of their career stature and 
try to make a song together. Or one thing about online collaboration is sometimes you could just do a verse, particularly in hip hop. It's like, you don't have to write a whole song together. Maybe you just contribute 30 seconds of a, a chorus's vocal harmony or something. So, or maybe a guitar solo. It can be pretty easy and fast to do a feature and that helps you reach twice the audience potentially. I want to play, I want to play some guitar solos on some of our listeners tracks. Hit oh, there you go. Look at that. I actually, a couple, a couple of our listeners who attended the conference, I've got some collaborations, not really in the works, but planned. I'm excited. I, about. Do, I do as well. Know, maybe with the same people. We'll see. Well, the next one, it is the word blogs with a question mark and the question mark similar to live streaming is there because Spending all your time doing p your own PR and pitching to blogs, I think can be a bit of a waste of time. In my opinion, people aren't going to blogs the same way they were 10 years ago or so. But if you really like make a list of a handful that you really care about, that you actually still read and that you think would like your music, reach out to them, try to do a premiere. Even if no one ends up going to consume your content on the blog, if you're lucky enough to get an article written, you can take a screenshot and it's similar to Kevin talking about reposting content. Like it's a perfect opportunity to just share something on social. So don't assume blogs are dead. Still reach out to a few. Yeah. They, they still seem to like exclusive video content. Like let them feature your video a week before your track comes out. That seems to work still. Yeah. This one is about talking to your listeners. So I think we put a lot of emphasis on video lately, but we have to remember that sometimes people are driving or they're also working on something on their computer and they don't want to watch a video. In that case, your voice can be very powerful. So there are a whole bunch of audio apps that allow you to talk directly to your listeners. Twitter has spaces where you can have conversations. Amazon now has Spotlight and Amp, which are short form and long form kind of vocal audio options spotify live is similar to clubhouse which clubhouse is still a thing as well and then for short audio messages pandora has their what is it called artist audio messaging thing mm -hmm. and you can just say hey it's chris you just heard this song here's what it's about and if you want to watch the video go to my website so don't be afraid to use these various tools to give short or long vocal messages to your audience and the guy on screen is saying he's very good at talking <laughs> <laughs> all right this one's all you uh yes another idea is to host a listening party i did this once on twitter and it worked out far better than i ever expected the idea was i told everybody hey at this time we're gonna push play on this album it was the an anniversary of one of our popular releases and so while i had everything timed to go along if someone was listening i was dropping on twitter behind the scenes pictures and stories about the music and the making of the music. And the goal was just to create a place online where people could amplify that experience. So they were sharing, they were posting links as well. It got a lot of people joining in. It was a lot of fun. There's other places you can do that. You can do things on YouTube and Facebook both have like a premiere type feature that you could do where you can host something to make an event out of it, but it's fun. It, <clears throat> it basically allows you to have content rolling and then the focus is you engaging with the fans around that content. So you're not performing. This next one is about checking out one of our partners at CD Baby Rotor Videos because they can help you make a whole bunch of different things. Spotify canvases, release teasers, full scale music videos, a whole bunch of stuff. And so what's on screen here is some little teasers I made, video teasers for an upcoming single. And I think I made like, 10 or 12 different ones and it probably took me maybe an hour to do all of them so it's really affordable and check it out yeah we have a what's what's our link is it rotorvideos.com slash cd baby yes go there you'll get a special discount but yeah it's so easy and like we talked about in our last episode with video it's important and you can try lots of different things it doesn't have to be all original content. It can be all the stock footage that they have in there. Lots of great things you can do to just add visuals to your music. Yeah. And I mean, that's basically what I was doing here is I just pulled a bunch of random different things that seemed to kind of go with the music. And then I tested them. I was like, which one worked the best out of 10 or 12 different options? 
for viewers, there's the same slide I had before. See these two people shaking hands. And similar to the welcome, the automated welcome email, I think you should spend a little bit of time assessing your entryway. I don't know. You're, when someone ends up on any platform that you're on, it's like, what's their first impression? What's the content that's screaming for their attention? Like on YouTube, there's the channel trailer. On Instagram and TikTok, you can pin videos to the top of your profile. Any place where you have control of what people see on their first impression, take a minute, make sure that is giving the impression you want, that your priority content is up top, the links are correct, all of that. Yes. And th this might be our last one. This is the last one. And this is one that took me a while to get into, but is a big promo opportunity. It's just the data. You have access to so much data. If you're not looking at it, you're missing promo opportunities. For example, I randomly realized that our top performing track on Pandora was this acapella song that we did off of our Christmas album, one of our Christmas albums. And I had a live video of that, of us doing it. And I, you know, I, it always played well at shows, but I didn't know that, you know, people were listening to it online all that much. When I saw that, I posted that video and it's like the one video that I would say, has gone viral for us. It had like 50,000 views rather quickly on Facebook. And every year it seems to pop back up again. But it was something that the data inspired me to go try. And there's lots of ideas like that in the data. Like there's songs that are performing better that you didn't realize. It happens a lot in the streaming world. Location might be a thing. It's like, oh, I didn't realize we're getting all this traction in this territory. That might spark some promotion ideas. But you know, I know for artists, we're not typically like wired to go. I love looking at spreadsheets and random numbers and data. But when you look at it through the lens of this is just all story information around your music and think about the ideas that can come from it, what's happening, why, and all that, it, it can inspire a lot of creativity. I think we went a little over, but we did pretty yeah. good. We did pretty good. We did pretty good. And uh, this eye is blinking at us saying, yes, we're done. <laughs> I think we're done. So that there was our are. 50 promo ideas in 50 minutes. It might have been 54 minutes. It was pretty close. I mean, come on. <laughs> so we hope there's some things in there really that just get the 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 spark going, the your imagination running wild of all the creative things you can do when you just think outside the box a little bit or maybe just take advantage of some of the simple things that are sitting right in front of you that can feel more valuable than you might've thought they were going to be. So we hope that was helpful. And again, if you have some promo ideas that are working that you thought should have made our list, or you want to share, you can call our listener line at 360-524-2209, or you can email us at podcast at cdbabypodcast.com. And Chris, I think we, the, the 50 minutes have passed, so we're done with that. We're, we're done with those on. 50 minutes. All right. Well, we've got lots more podcasts planned. Chris, I think we've got a double episode of for TikTok coming up. Yeah. It's going to be a good mm -hmm. one. I've got a, a guest lined up for one of those. It's going to be great. Yeah. The hits we've just keep coming. We, we've got our podcasting schedule ready through through November, I think, so. Yeah. Lots of good stuff. Yeah, lots of good stuff. So thanks for hanging with us. And we'll be back with more next time. Take it easy. See you next See week. Ya.